welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review. I am your host, Sarah Stevenson, and this is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, everybody. And today we're doing a review on Psycho, the 1960s version of it. Yeah, the real one. Mm. Alfred Hitchcock, yeah. the guy who set the pace for many mm. producer directors to come. A lot of people have copied him over the years, but never have actually matched him. Mm. And now I'm, 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 I'm not saying there's not a lot of good people out there. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but the point is he started it. Yeah, incidentally, mm. guys, uh, I got to admit that when we were doing this, when I was working on, on the field, the research today, um, I must admit that while researching, it feels like we've been writing a whole book about it with all the research we've gathered oh, for this one. You. So it's if it's going to be... a um, a very long, long podcast today. We'll, well, just let us know. <laughs> yeah, Michael, let us, me know. Tell us if you're getting a bit bored. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give her a thump which is talking too much. <laughs> nah. No, nah, there is a lot of information. There's more, so some of it's about the movie. Well, okay, we're doing a podcast about the movie, but there's a bit, bit of behind the scenes stuff, a bit about, bit about Hitchcock himself and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah things like that. So, yeah, yeah. hope, hope. Hopefully you find it as interesting as we do. Yeah, and if you guys have, a, have or have not ever seen this movie, I advise, please go to this movie, please. You don't go to it, you have to get a copy of it. Yeah, you get a copy of it. Purchase a copy thereof or go to your local video hire place and see if yeah, you're going to hire a copy. I know how copy. much I, I may lead you guys on by saying this at the end of each podcast, but I should, I should say this more often at the beginning. Be sure to yeah. watch it before you listen to this podcast. Yeah. It's just like every, every, a lot of these old movies, I mean, people forget about them. I mean, I'm not knocking the younger generation because they watch the new product. They don't know these movies exist. Mm-hmm. And when you get into the old movies, you go, I mean, I've got movies going back to the at least over 100 years old, old silent movies, and I enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy watching new movies. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good stuff out there, folks. Mm-hmm. Now, what are we going to do now? Let's introduce the um, cast and the crew or, and stuff. Well, I'm not going to tell you everybody, mm-hmm. but the main ones have to be, drumroll please, from Anthony Perkins. Now, he plays the male lead, mm-hmm. uh, for want of a better expression, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know how to describe Anthony. He's been in movies before this. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been in movies after this. Um, I would say this would have to be his best mm. um, interpretation of a character. Mm-hmm. Good point. He's brilliant at it. He has you thinking he is really who he is. He's not mm. Norman Bates. He's, I mean, he's not Anthony, Anthony Perkins. He is really Norman Bates, an old creepo. Anyway, he's the main one. Now, unfortunately, Janet Lee plays the lead female role. Hmm. But they kill her off after, what, how many, what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? I think about 40 <laughs> or 30 minutes. 30 or 40 minutes, yeah. They kill her off. And, but that's obviously the, the uh, base of the story. She is going to get killed off because she is the lead female yeah, who has to be killed. Well, I hmm. talked about this in my other podcast about um, how many minutes it takes for the actual killing to proceed. This one uh, can make an exception because the music draws you in and starts yeah, ex- me, giving me, me. No yeah, <laughs> start giving you anticipation, waiting to the right moment when something is going to be sinister going I to be must happening. Admit, yeah, I mean, before the actual sinister yeah, murder know. bit, but the music where she's in the car, she's driving along, she's yeah. and she just, just the basic. I mean, and actually, if you have a look at this, this is really what we're talking about. The art, the um, it, it's an early, not not early. It's a late version of film noir style mm-hmm. of movie making too. Yeah. It has got that basic. Black and white. He went back to black and white when colour was being done because to keep the budget down mm-hmm. as well. But yeah. you can do so much more black and white for these sorts of things yeah. back in those Inst- days. Incidentally, yeah. guys, I should mention that this move, this movie, um, Paramount, Paramount Pictures mm. didn't exactly weren't jumping for joy for this one. They or, didn't want to finance it. Yeah, so Hitchcock ended up using his own money yeah, to finance it. Yeah, but in those days, eight hundred thousand. Despite the um, movie Hitchcock that came out in year two thousand and twelve, he didn't use the money f- to he didn't mortgage his ha- remortgage his house to pay for the lot. So just so you guys know, in case you get confused, just so you know. 
So he just um, put used money he, he set money. aside for he, it. He, he raised his own funds or either out of his bank account or got a loan or something. But what happened is he did finance it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he had a deal there. Uh, he get what, a percentage of the take? Or yeah, a percentage of the take. Yeah, something. Uh, yeah. A 60, 60%, 60%, 60% I think interest, it was. Or? Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, whatever, yeah. Yeah, so ownership of the net negative or something or other. Mm. He had some deal set up so the the uh, Paramount Studios wouldn't feel like they were going to be putting dead money on the table, mm. and they accepted his deal. Mm. And I think the movie has made about eight hundred thousand, made about fifteen million at the box office. Mm-hmm. Boy, were they wrong! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the last laughs on him, them. Them. <laughs> it is to laugh. <laughs> yeah, so how, so who else is, is stars in this movie? Oh, like? I'm not going to go for everybody. They're the, they're the two main. Uh, Vera Miles, she plays um, uh, Janet Lee's uh, sister. sister. Mm-hmm. So she goes looking for, um, well, Janet Lee's character is Marion Crane. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she goes looking for Marion mm-hmm. after she disappears after stealing about $40,000 uh, <laughs> from her employer's. Um, <laughs> Custody, and uh, mm. he was a real estate agent, yeah, uh, and that was so the, the main Dubai house. That's yeah. a lot of money back in those days. Mm-hmm. Uh, back I in no the doubt, 60s. Mike. So, what's uh, our final lead in this movie? Wait if a minute, if you a call the lead, one. John Gavin, he played the other male lead, well, second lead, whatever, who helps Vera Miles' mm-hmm. character, yeah. uh, Lila Crane, yeah. look for the uh, missing Marion Crane. Yeah, incidentally, mm. um, um. As a co-star, um, Pat Hitchcock, um, oh, yes, that yes, would yes. be um, Alfred Hitchcock's daughter. daughter. Yes, he plays. She stars in this, but as a small, small, yes, he small plays small um, a bit role in the beginning, playing yeah. Marion Crane's uh, uh, a friend, uh, I think, uh, I think, fellow employee. Yeah. No, not friend, fellow employee. They they're both secretaries in the real estate firm. Yeah, and but wait a minute. Ah, now Alfred Hitchcock always made a cameo appearance. In movies, mm-hmm. now if people don't know about him, uh, Alfred, he'd always get in there mm. just for a couple of seconds. Now in this movie, at the beginning, I think when Marion Crane is walking into the office, there's a man in a cowboy hat looking through the window of the real estate agency, mm-hmm. and that is Alfred Hitchcock. Mm-hmm. Ah, ha. Ha. <laughs> yeah. So Pat. Um, his daughter, she's been in this movie and Strangers on the Train, I think. That was another Hitchcock one. Oh, well, and all she's in been, the family, folks. And she's been in um, Alfred Hitchcock's, um, you know, what, those TV shows that he did oh, years he did, ago. Yeah, he did uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Presents or something rather. Yeah, that one. Yeah, he did, he some, did a few, epi- yeah, a few um, appearances in that, those yeah, ones. Yeah, he did a couple of se- or a season or two of that. They were half-hour shows or something, and they were really mm-hmm. good. But yeah, they weren't the same as the movie, but they still had the master's touch. Yes, true. Mm. So anyway, um, should we dive into the movie itself? Oh, splash! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the story it takes off where um, where Marion Crane is just hanging out with her boyfriend Sam Loomis. Um, bear in mind, guys, Samuel Loomis is the same name from for our lead other lead character, another character in Halloween. Who was also named Samuel Loomis too? Interesting, hey. Mm. Mm. No yeah. imagination, folks. Can't figure out original names. Mm. I don't know. I thought it was an inspiration, especially when Jamie Lee Curtis was in Halloween, which is um Janet Lee's daughter. Oh yeah, no, I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm. Mm, very interesting information. Keep well, that in mind, guys. Spooky, isn't it, folks? Yeah, it is spooky. And anyway, go on. Anyway, so um, they just um, had a bit of Bumpty Dumpty. <laughs> oh, not wrong. And, and actually, that opening shot there, though, in the bedroom at the motel, and for that period of time, the way they were in bed together, even even though they weren't totally naked, that was pretty hardcore stuff for back in those days. Yeah. Remind us, 1960? Yeah, 1960. Uh, yeah, and that, yeah. things were different back yeah, then. Yeah, back <laughs> then, censors, they would censor a lot of things. Like, if so much as a person in bed together with another person, they would either f- um, not shoot it or don't bother to show it or anything like that. Well, that's very true. I mean, and often I'd show a husband and wife in two single beds in the bedroom. Mm-hmm, true. Uh, back yeah. in those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. Really mm-hmm. weird crap. You know? Yeah, they had a lot of rules, but over the years, the rules have either broken or moved. Well, they've been, been bent. Over the, people have been 
well, the censorship guys have gone a little bit easier, saying, well, real people do that. So as long as it's not pornography, they're usually happy. Mm-hmm, yeah, true. So, yeah. so anyway, um, Samuel, Sam Loomis is going to be heading off back to wherever he came from. He's yeah, a couple, of, uh, a couple yeah. of states away. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's running. He has his own problems where he's um he has to pay off his father's debts. He has to pay off his alimony to his ex-wife. Ex-wife. Hey, there's one thing about me. A good-looking babe like this. Why is she hanging around with damaged goods? I don't know. He might be a good-looking fellow. Yeah. He got no money. He's living in the, in the back of a hardware store, paying off debts for his, his father, paying off alimony. Not much for a future here. Yeah, and not to mention, um, I took the liberty of writing, reading the book recently, um, a while back. Robert Block wrote the book. Yeah, and it's pretty mm. interesting, and... Mike was just asking me the other day, how did she and Loomis met? And I told him they met on a cruise, which was never mentioned in the movie, but it was an interesting fact that they, how they got started in their relationship. Another shipboard romance, folks. (laughs) Yes. The love boat. Yes. So anyway, um, Marion Crane says she'll try to help her boyfriend try to get the money in order to get them engaged. Yeah, and stuff. Well, I don't think she said that, but she was prepared to do anything. She was prepared to do anything. She said, I'll go go live in the back of the hardware store and I'll do this and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll live in in poverty with you because I love you so much. Oh, what a load of rubbish. Yes. (laughs) So then... When you have kids running around the hardware store, they're Uh, (laughs) Yes, so anyway. So the same day, she goes off to work and... Of course, we meet Patty, who's playing one of the other roles as a secretary, too, with her. Yep. And as they were working, um, her boss walks in, and he has this wealthy um, um, person, you know, person... A pers- Cops customer. A rich guy who's buying a block of dirt for his little girl who's getting married. Yes. Ta-da! Yes, and he has, like, 40... Forty thousand dollars. Now, back, this, remember, this is back in nineteen sixty. That's a lot of money. Yeah, and know, that's probably about what four hundred thousand today or something rather. And yeah. Mike, didn't you say earlier to me yesterday when we were watching the movie that it didn't look like forty thousand? Yeah, the wad of money didn't look like forty thousand. To me, it looked like more like twenty thousand. But yeah, that's just funny. schematics, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it just didn't look. Yeah. It should have been fatter. Yeah. So, um, yeah. her boss asks her to take the money into the. To the bank to yeah, put deposit. Yeah, put a safe deposit box overnight. Oh, no, it was a Friday night, wasn't it? So, yeah, yeah until Monday morning. Until so Monday yeah. morning. So, she was mm. keeping it overnight. Then they'll, then they'll do the banking for it later. He just didn't want it in the office yeah, over the so weekend. Yeah, so she mm. ends up going... Safely. Yeah, safe so she ends up um, leaving early from work very suspiciously. She said, I have got a headache, boss. I want to go home. Yes. Oh, so she, shame, 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 shame. So, she gets um, all her stuff together... The money is already in, in a small envelope or envelopes, yep. and she um, gets gets into her car and drives away. And along the way, she she her dad her boss sees her driving away, and he's it's supposed, to be, supposed to be home for headache. Uh oh, mm. uh, yeah, he's probably thinking that. And all through this drive, we hear a lot of um, her thoughts of the conversations probably going on between the her and yeah, yeah. her her. Her, his client, and other conversations like her and Sam talking about it. I look what I got. I found this money on the on the way here. <laughs> oh, listen, to you lucky. <laughs> yeah, and they probably end up if they if they proceeded with their plan, they could have ended up becoming fugitives. Yeah. Like that, with yeah. Love, and not living a life of oh. what she expected. <laughs> No, if, the, if things she, went, she the didn't way. really think about prob, did she? No, she didn't. Your typical blonde. Yeah, no, and I didn't say that. along the way, she blonde, gets some. Um, oh. She kind of sleeps on the highway, and a police car drives well, up in, in a car. Yes. on the highway. And you know how police <laughs> get when they see some person sleeping in a car, leaving. Uh, well. Especially good-looking blonde. Yes, so she's like, her, well, if you've seen the movie, you'll see that her eyes are. Like wide, like she's she could tell right away that something is up. If you're a policeman, yeah, the, yeah, the, the 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 cop, um, he he looks sinister to me. You know, he'd scared. He'd scare me too. Yeah, and I'm well, a man. He, he, was, well, he was wearing glasses and he didn't... Yeah, but his he face... He almost looked like Lurcio, the Adams family. You know, he, he was really be. had a... He did! 
Yeah. I mean, crikey. I wake up dead sleep, see his, his face looming in at me. And, oh, yeah, I'll be off. I'll, I'll see you then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No questions, man. Yeah, so she gives him, um, shows him her license, said that she was there was no law against her sleeping in her car. Not that I'm aware of either. <laughs> Maybe there is a law. Well, it's uh, not safe. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that, that's what the policeman, or well, the sheriff, or patrolman, patrolman implied. It wasn't a would. safe idea. You know, yeah, yeah, so she drives off. She sees the car, his car r- driving behind her, and she thinks, oh, my gosh, she's on to me, <laughs> or something. But he soon drives off in one of the exits, eventually. Yeah, he wasn't quite following her. But that, and that's interesting. Mm. She's driving down the road. He takes an exit and goes somewhere else. Mm. A few minutes later, she has a car dealership mm. and he's driving past. Mm. Hello. Where's the continuity, guys? Oh, where's someone's made a mistake? I don't know. I thought it was an interesting... Well, how could he be there if he went off on a different road? Good point. But it he makes for an interesting twist. But I think it was an interesting twist. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, leading up to her thinking if he's comes near me he'll probably be asking more questions about why i'm here and stuff like that yeah. or something like that anyway anyway she <coughs> buys a car with the pet with the um some of the that you know th- some of the money yeah but she so put seven hundred dollars yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, she came from phoenix arizona yes and she was going to some place in um um uh Bakersfield, I believe in California. I think Bakersfield. <laughs> and uh, that's where she's heading, but she thought, well, to stop people mm. or people th- being suspicious, police picking her up, mm. she wanted to trade a car in off local plates. I think that's the reason why she bought that's, the car. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> so she changes her car over to get for, the, for another car. She gets in and drives away. The policeman we don't see again, or so we are unaware of. Well, he's not in the movie. Yeah, and she continue. We continue down the road, and yeah. and all the time, yeah, Marion Crane kind of he, keeps <laughs> keeps thinking about any conversations that the policeman and the um drive the um car salesman might be thinking. Thinking it's strange that a woman just would just come around, buy a car without te- checking it, and yeah, just and go high pressures the salesman. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. Without the usual routine. Didn't even take it for test drive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, so she does this and she um, continues driving down the road and having more conversations like maybe her boss um, finally picking up that that she was stole the money and is going to pop off with it. <laughs> well, with the, yeah, well. Anyway, this is still the weekend. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so not Monday yet. <laughs> funny. Uh-huh. Well, it's not. See, they gave the Phoenix... Arizona over to Bakersfield in California so one or two days of yeah no but her, yeah. he probably was so just Saturday mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so anyway um we s- after a few more conversations in our brain or something and the spooky music continues to voices in her head and the music continues to, to um sh- shift the um, mood here and there um mm. she soon arrives at the hotel and you know, and, and meets, meets Norman. Norman. And he seems like a nice oh, yeah. um, boy next door now, type. Now, uh, you know how he eats, how in this, he's often eating candy corn. Now, I don't know, I believe it's just something like lollies. <laughs> I know it, yeah. It's something in America. I think it's lollies. Uh, too. It's lollies, like, yeah, like it's small candy uh, mm-hmm. things. And now, that wasn't part of his character. Norman Bates's character didn't do that. Anthony Perkins liked eating candy corn. Ah, so he, bought the, he he made the part his own, being natural. I like candy corn, so <laughs> Norman basically candy corn. Oh, so he bought his own, Can- own personal on habit. Board. Well, he bought his own personal habits on board. <laughs> oh, as that's well. clever. And I think Marion Crane, I mean, I mean um, what's her name? Um, Janet Lee. Janet, Janet <laughs> Lee, uh, yeah, I've got the trolls here. Janet Lee and Anthony Perkins, uh, they uh, were allowed to would interpret the roles their own way mm. uh, so they can bring their own personality into it to make it more real. Believable, yes. Yeah, and they did. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Um, at, back to the story. He back shows her to um, her room, room one, in order to, so she can be more close to the office in case she needed anything. Exactly, what a kind man. Yeah, and he offers to give her a bit of some some sandwiches because she's probably hungry and a little yeah, tired. Yeah, it was late at night and it was raining. And, yeah. And he, he is a gracious host. Very uh, nice. <laughs> so I guess what, 
it's probably cheese sandwiches, you know that? Yeah. Because that shows up in other shows that he, his mother used to make him cheese sandwiches a lot when he was sick in bed, and he always had this thing about cheese sandwiches. So, oh, so I reckon it must have been a cheese sandwich. Uh, I'll take your word for it, Mike. I don't like cheese sandwiches. Mm-mm. Yes, I can't see Mike without a cheese sandwich in his hands. <laughs> Trust me, Especially audience. tasty cheese. You know, <laughs> the, the, the cheddar is a bit lame with that tomato and onion and stuff. But yeah, well, yeah. maybe yeah. Um, Bates is probably feels the same way too. You betcha. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so on. anyway, um, as they eat, as she's eating because he's not hungry, I think. Um, we well actually before she, we get to that, um, Norman has an, a heated argument with his mum. Yes, he goes the, up. The house is just behind the motel. Yeah, yeah, it's very sinister. And if you watch um, the trailer from the original trailer from Hitchcock, you see that he describes it as a very dark um, um, place compared to the motel that looks very nice and calm. Nice and light. Yes, yeah. a bit of a mixture of dark and light. You know, in this sort of this is thing. a film noir sort of stuff. Thing goes yeah, with darker yeah. lights and stuff. And he yeah. describes yeah. it that um, it's a no, it's a nice place. The ho- the um, the motel. It's not nothing grisly about it, or so it's made appear. It looks very to the nice. Audience. I wouldn't stay there. It's not my type. I go I go five star. But you know. Yes. So anyway, um, so his mother yells at him, saying, ha, ha, "You know all the nasty things. I won't say them out loud on yes, this yes, podcast." Yes. Exactly right. Yes. But you have to watch the movie. Yeah. I mean. yeah. So anyway, he comes back, offers her some sandwiches, and offers to eat it, have her eat them in his parlour. Which is behind the office area, for the mm-hmm. little sitting room at the back of the uh, office. Yeah. Yes, and he they discuss and how talk about traps and... And, and things. And things yeah. like dealing with his mother and having... And going in private islands. Yeah, that sort of stuff. stuff Actually, like one thing... That was a very good scene because it. Uh, I think the way I interpret it, and I think uh, a lot of people would, it made people feel sorry for Norman Bates. Mm. This poor guy, he's staying, he's running a motel, mm. he's broke, he's got a sickly mother, and yeah, blah, 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 blah all blah, the above. Blah. And she's starting to feel sorry for Norman in yeah. some ways, and then realise that he's, got, he's put himself in a bit of trap there. But she's putting herself in a trap while stealing the money. Yeah, and and this is starting um, her train of thought for a bit. Yeah, out she starts mm, to mm. rethink her plan her of actions. of mm. taking the money in the first place and thinking it, of going home and thinking of going back home and trying to um, try to give it back to the, the rightful owners or yeah, whatever. Yeah, instead of making herself look like incriminated, right then. Yeah, and be there at work on Monday morning. These are forty thou. Yeah, I'm sorry for stealing it, but I may have well, spent it on a car. Well, they would She brought it back to work. See what well, they would not have known. Mm. Huh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> However, she doesn't go back to work. Yes. Well, we'll get to that well, part. No, that's the next scene. <laughs> so Norman says um, he'll um, see her in the morning with a, with some breakfast, and we watch um, Marion leave and go back to her room. Next door. And she's trying to organise uh, figures so trying to work out how she's going to pay back the rest of the money and stuff like that. That's easy. Yes. But she tears it up and puts it in the toilet bowl. I mean, toilet. Which is another thing in ah. this movie. This is the first time they shot a movie with a toilet in the scene. Yeah. Up until this time, it was unheard of to show a toilet. Especially an open toilet. Yes. With bits of stuff paper, not other things, uh, floating around in it and flushing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you wouldn't flush it. No. So the, the censorship board was really weird back in those days. Yeah. yeah, well, they had their reasons. They probably thought... Um, Do we really need to show a toilet? Yeah, yeah well, it's relevant to the storyline. Yeah, I mean, if this was an ordinary police <laughs> mystery movie, you the police wouldn't ne- necessarily search everywhere, even the toilet. Yeah, and, the lid was, and it's quite interesting, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's the first time mm-hmm. a, a major sex scene or sex implication scene at the beginning and a shout uh, at all this, this scene at the toilet and the next scene which we're going to talk about in a moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. so anyway, um, she then ducks into the, t- to the bathroom which is another scene where where they didn't, weren't sure about the shower scene so much. <laughs> well, 
I don't know if they're sure about it, but they uh, no. they knew they were going to do it. Yeah, true. I don't true. think the production guys though. They um, no, they were the censors still. The censors guy gave, gave it a a, um, a naked a lady look. shower. What do you expect to have an evening dress on in the shower? Mm. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so she gets in, and we see it from different angles where it doesn't sound look like inappropriate. Now, actually, I I, I had some notes here. But I won't go on. They did something like. For about a 45 second take, oh yeah, scene, they did something like, oh, how much? They did so many, a second here, a second there. They did something like 40 different angles and paste them all together. Mm. So you saw a nice flashing around and you saw the skin. You didn't see anything, naked boobs or anything. You saw nothing rude. Everything was implied and that was would have been really yeah. hard to put together. Yeah, just so you guys know, when they were filming this scene, they had to postpone it a couple of times because Janet Lee was either having a cold or, or her period. Or that time of the month, ladies. So mm-hmm. they had to postpone it for those because they don't want yeah, to make a mess. They were being nice to her. She was the leading lady mm-hmm. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so anyway, she, um, the murder is done. She lands flat on the ground and stuff like that. Oh, wait a minute. Well, the, the blood. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, I'm forgetting this the, gu- the special gentleman. effects part here. The special effects for this, the blood coming down her legs and whatever, and down the drain, was actually some sort of chocolate syrup. Yes. Wasn't it? Yeah, but, yeah chocolate syrup. Yeah, yeah like it was, according to the, the um, guys, they said it was, um, let me see, I'll, I'll explain. I'll, I'll just get to that note. Let me see. Yes, you got lots of notes here. Yes, I kind of written a, lo- a, dos, not, a huge dos- story here. Yeah. So, let matter. me see. Ah, here it is. Um, let me see. The blood in the shower scene is actually chocolate syrup, which shows up better on black and white films yeah, and has more darker. realistic yeah. um, density than stage blood. Yeah, it's stage blood's a bit on the thin side and the water might have been a bit, a bit too wishy-washy. Mm. So yeah, the uh, the flavouring being a sugar base mm-hmm. probably went a lot better. Mm. Mm. So we're kind of um, they did a good job by using scared the crap blood. out of me. That chocolate was, blood. <laughs> so anyway, um, we hear Norman Bates yelling, "Oh mother, Whoa, you blood, 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 and we and of course he runs into a Marion Crane's arm room and sees her dead body, and he starts trying to plan out his uh, to. You know, well, he, cover up the murder. Because he, he wants to protect his mother like any doting son would. Ooh, yes. He did. He's looking after his mummy. Yes. Ah, oh, isn't that lovely? So anyway, he ta- he gets a um, um, mop and a bucket and, and stuff. Sta- and, and some plastic sheets and starts cleaning up the body and the blood on the walls. I mean, blood on the, um, the uh, shower and everywhere else. Everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and... It was he, a mess. Yeah, and it just so you guys know what happened to the money, it was wrapped inside a newspaper so and to he didn't avoid even know it was there. detection. Yeah. yeah, so... And he picked yeah. it up and threw it in the car with the dead body and stuff. Yeah, or found even a second glimpse, yeah. whatever. Mm. So anyway, he drives the car out grand, to huh? the um, swamp and it he sinks, sinks the, the whole car and Marion and lug, lug, all lug, the lug, um, lug, lug, lug. evidence. Yeah, not yes. bad, hey? Yes, and for Look, a minute... Your own personal swamp. Yeah, there you go, folks. So, yeah, every, half every home just have one. Mike, shut up. <laughs> so anyway, um, while the, he was sinking, the, just halfway through sinking, it kind of stopped sinking. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, dear. And then, but somehow eventually it did sink Must eventually. Must have been or something. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, so um, it, all evidence of Marion Crane and her existence uh, ceased. Obliterated. Obliterated there. Oh. So we fade out and fade in onto um, Lila Crane arriving at um, Sam's um, hardware store. She wanted to buy some nails, did she? No. <laughs> yes, no. some of So anyway, she comes up to Sam and says, accuse him of gosh knows what and not giving him a, and trying not to explain the whole what's wrong. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, mm-hmm. while they're talking, this uh, mm-hmm. private detective, Mr. Arborgast. Arborgast. <laughs> so, comes there and he starts to stick his beak in as well. Yeah, and fingering both. Um, oh, yeah, this is a week later. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah, yeah. they were both fingering Sam for maybe hiding uh, Marion Crane or or something. Mm-hmm. But he said he's just as much in the dark as they are. <laughs> so he goes out and he starts searching hotels, motels, inns, whatever. To oh, find out oh, if she's yeah. been li- staying in the area. 
without with having me contacting Sam and, just and, yet. And lastly, but not leastly, he comes to along the Bates, Motel. Bates Motel, which is just out of town, a tad, which yes. is on the old main road. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. first of first that first Norman Bates denies that she was there, but then he says he does recognize oh, her vaguely. from the well, photo. I a good picture of her, yeah, so he describes that then. she just um ha- had a qu- she stayed the night and she then left the the following morning. He didn't to go back to where she came from or whatever. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, well, he, she didn't tell him where she was going to or mm. going from. Well, she said something that she was going to go head back into get herself out of yeah, trouble. Yeah, but didn't say where she was going. I don't mm. think she mentioned it in the dialogue. So mm. he wouldn't know where she was coming from or going to. Yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, anyway, she's going back home. That's yeah, it. so mm. um, the police, um, he tries to even try to trick Norman in some of the scenes, like asking him, have you spent the night with her? Did you um, sleep with her? And stuff like that. And, of course, Norman was a bit shocked How at these rude. questions. Who wouldn't be? A nice be? boy like that. <laughs> so... But then again, uh, most, uh, of the, most of the stuff he mentions or were a bit like where he says um, that about not phoning anyone, no, not having any visitors and not doing anything. Yeah, anything how did I make any phone calls if did you didn't sleep with her all night? Yes, true. Ah, 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 ah. We didn't sleep with her anyway. Okay, no. Yes, so anyway, um, Arbogast leaves and he phones... Um, at a phone booth, I think. Yeah, yeah he went booth. to a phone booth. Yeah. He phoned Lila. Yeah, yeah, he phones Lila and tells her what he's, he's discovered. And he heads back out to the hotel, motel and he goes up to the actual house. Looking to, for Norman's mother. Yeah, because he, he found out from Norman that his mother knew something, or so we think. <laughs> yes. He goes up to the, ho- the house. He goes inside. The place is not locked, just so you know. Which is a bit strange when you think about it. And oh, look, I can't get a tenant. What might we think any self respecting burglar will go there? Yes, so mm, um, mm, he heads mm. upstairs and he gets attacked by someone dressed in, or someone that looks like his, like Norman Bates' mum. Yeah, an old bird in a dress and. Yes, and, and, and he falls off. down the stairs and probably breaks his back. And well, he does, and, and then the. And Female goes in there and stabs in the chest yeah, and stuff. Yeah, several or eight times. I don't. I haven't kept track. And I think he gets parked in the swamp as well. Yes. Yeah, so, mm. Lila and, and and Sam are waiting by the phone or waiting in the hardware store for an ant for anything. Haven't got any calls. And ah. so Sam goes out to the motel to find out what happened to Arbogast. Of course, the car that Ab- and Arbogast are gone, and he hadn't. Back at the ho- the hardware store, and he go they go t- off to the sheriff's department or sheriff's house, right then. Yeah. And where they um tell their find their findings to the sh- the sheriff, I think. They do. And he says that um, well that it, there's no way it couldn't be Norman Bates' uh, mum m- there because she's been dead for ten dead years. For 10 or years. Like so. Uh, uh huh. So it's a bit weird there. Uh, Anyway, he got a female up. Uh, yeah, he's a housekeeper. Yeah, ah. even his wife, when she they said uh, Mrs. Bates, his wife says, the sheriff's wife, I mean, says, Oh, did Norman marry already? Yeah, Stop it. and mm. didn't tell anyone, <laughs> yeah. even though Norman Bates um, it's, lives alone up there, like a hermit existence. I, just, I think that's what the sheriff said. Yeah, like a hermit, mm-hmm. he keeps to himself, mm. and uh, he's supposed to be a good boy, keeps out of trouble. Yeah. Not. Not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, the sheriff phones him and says that the sheriff did came there. The the, said the uh, said the detective did came there, but he went away, and that was it. That was a bit odd to everyone, even though the sheriff is a bit naive. Well, the, the sheriff believed Norman because Norman is a local, and Norman's never been in trouble. So why wouldn't he believe Norman? Yeah, good point. Ah, so anyway, ah. I think it's the next day. I think I'm not sure, but probably, uh, probably. Anyway, um, they, c- they, um, Lila Crane, Lila Crane, and and Sam come up with a plan of their own to find out more by posing as husband and wife, and they go out to the hotel and that way. And it's a bit odd because they didn't have any luggage. Yeah, no luggage. Now you think like she would have come. Mm. 
from Phoenix to Bakersfield. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and she would have had an overnight bag at least. At least, um, at least so, something. Yeah, why didn't they have a bag? What did they in her car? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was his car. Ah, oh, they should have. She couldn't have his yeah. car. I mean, her. And uh, yeah, take her bag. It may look like so. Back up their story, you know. Yeah, how at they least. Do. But I think. I know they're going to go in the motel and they're going to sleep naked. I don't know. I think I'm not. I'm not the. Didn't even have a toothbrush. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah well. So it's a little weird this scene because it doesn't. It doesn't wash or whatever. Well, it didn't wash for me. Yeah. yeah so. They come there, um, register as husband and wife, yada, 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 and he, Norman takes them to their room. I've got a funny question here. What? If Sam Loomis is a local who lives in Bakers, feels only 50 minutes drive away. Here it comes, guy. And Norman Bates is on the outskirts of Bakersfield. Yes. If Norman had to go into town to buy something from the hardware store. Yes. Wouldn't you met the manager who works behind the counter? Hmm, that's a good question. Ah. Ah. But then again, he's... Are you going to say there's going to be more than one hardware store, aren't you? There could be one, <laughs> more than one hardware store. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a small town. Small town, little town, yeah, exactly right. And mm. if you've been down Australia, you see a lot of hardware stores here. Yeah, exactly, like in the olden days. You wouldn't have lots of... You wouldn't have Bunnings over there and, and so on over there and something. No, no. Uh, I guess you have a point. Yeah. I mean, my, I mean, not mentioning spa- locations or anything, but my sister does live, you know, in a, a not so busy, a real small environment. <laughs> yeah, you like you got, you got a bit here and a bit there, but he, he would actually... You would think have come across Sam somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyway, irrespective. Irrespective. <coughs> so they register there. They they get blah, blah, blah. and they um, both Sam and Lila want to head into cabin one to find out if there's any evidence. So they head in there while Norman wasn't around, and they head into their bathroom, and they see a fragment of a what of, of a piece of paper of that has a few figures on it. That were written Something in Something or other taken away from $40,000. Hand. Like, yeah. So, they said, ah, see, it was here. Yeah, and they think that this has something to do with him, Norman, stealing, stealing the, the money, money and oh, killing oh. Marion Crane. But they can be not far off when you think about Close, that Close, but missed by that much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, anyway, um, they decide to do another plan by getting Sam to talk as much as possible to Norman, Norman. and and Lila yeah. would go up there and have a word to Mrs. Bates. Ooh. <laughs> Why don't you do witch voice? <laughs> Ooh, scare <myself. laughs> Yes. So anyway, um, while well, Sam's talking to Norman, doing all the chattering, um, Lila is going up t- to the mansion, and of course mansion? she. House. Well, house or <laughs> it does look like a man. A little it's bit a carpenter gothic, carpenter gothic, gothic, yes. gothic house. It's nice. It does look. Think nice. of the Adams family, you know. Uh, yeah, monsters, well, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So they, she goes up there. Um, it's sort of a po- there's a few point of view shots in this scene where she's walking up that hill, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. So sneak, as she sneak, 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 sneak. Yeah. So mm-hmm. she ends up going up to. Um, once she's inside, she goes up to um, the mother's bedroom, m- bedroom and she sees. The Mother's not there. Yeah. Ah. Just incidentally, before they end up in that room, end up at the hotel, Norman had the um, speed and see, I'm not sure, to, what? well, well, far quickly, he um, removes her, her from her room to put her down the root cellar. I think, or well, the why, basement. Why, but why would he have done that, Sarah? I don't know. He's that just, I mean, I think the sheriff came round there and... To remove uh, all evidence of hers to avoid detection or anything like that. So anyway, as I was saying, she's Leia Crane is in the in the room. She sees it hasn't. There's nothing suspicious there. There's a bit of a lumps in the bed yeah, that well, look yeah, like that someone's dead, like someone's been lying there for an awful long time. Yeah, like someone like Sarah in the morning doesn't go to bed till twelve o'clock. Yeah, but I think yeah. it was much more like she's the person has been lying there for like years, years mm-hmm. without moving or even having to shift body around. You know how when you are in bed, you, your body tends to shift around. All around a bit. Well, yeah. this body was is sort of stiff in a one position throughout. You know, stiff as a board. Yeah. Like she's not not moving at all. 
wonder why. Anyway, carry on. Anyway, Mac. so she ends up going to Norman's room and it has a lot of a small small bit of a bunk or yeah, cot, a like, cot yeah, like, like bunk. A, a like, like almost like a camp cot, you know, like yeah. folding sort of thing. It yeah, look like a I used bed, to have yeah. something like that when I was renting a, at a house one time. It was not really comfortable. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so anyway, she and sees some books. There's a few toys that have been and a left few leftover left from his childhood. I think yeah, there yeah. is a book. There is books that she looks at, but uh, I I remain ignorant. Nah. So he picked the books he picked up, mm-hmm. which had no words written on it. When she opened it up, she looked a little bit startled or horrified. Yeah. Or, it was supposed to be a book on pornography or something similar to that. Yeah. But the reason why it had nothing written on the outside, it wanted to build your suspension up. Yes. Your suspense, not suspense. Your suspense up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. Mm. Aha. So she ends up, um, while all this is happening, um, Norman is getting a little wiser to yes, why Sam's, Sam's asking questions. Sam's all delaying questions. tactics downstairs. And Sam yeah. lets out the big guns by saying, um, "Such a place, such a place like this, you need to get money to get away and try to re- reconstruct the a ho- another hotel because this one is off the highway, meaning you don't get very much business." No, not anymore. No. Yeah, so he tries to accuse him of stealing money and yada yada yada. And when um, Norman notices that, he where's, said, where's the, your where's your wife? Yeah, and when he got wise, ah. he ends up shutting him down by hitting him yeah, and, and clunking him on the head with a next tray or something. Or, yes, yeah, and yeah. he heads up to the manch to the to Man. the to the house to save mummy from yes. this lady. And yeah. of course, at this point, Lila is already down in the basement, and, and she s- meets meets mm. Mrs. Bates. And she's a very nice lady. She's very calm. Stiff as a board. <laughs> Stiff as a board. She's been dead for ten years. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, as it turns out, she's a corpse. And uh, 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 yeah. mummy, mummy dearest, literally, she's yeah. been pre- she's been preserved. Yeah. Mm. Incidentally, I have fa- I found some interesting facts about her about this um, mannequin or dummy prop they made. The prop. Um, yeah. Hitchcock put Norma Bates, the the corpse, in Janet Lee's um, dressing room to test how scared it, scary it will look. She, she screamed. Then he <laughs> waits for for Lila, t- I mean for Janet to return to the, her room and listens out for how loud she screams when she saw the cops there. The old screamer made her work quite well. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think he was just trying to see how if anyone would scream. Well, maybe he's had a sick sense of humour. I don't know. But anyway, irrespective. Um, so ir- irrespective. They re- um, Norman comes in mm-hmm. at this point in time dressed in a mm. lady's dress and a cheap wig mm. wielding a dirty great big carving knife. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Sam finally arrives to save the day, tackles um, Norman and Nor- tackles him to the, the ground. Then you see the clothes come up. It's Norman underneath the clothing. So, uh, ah. Uh, uh. And then re- and it, and, it, and it cuts away to the police station. Yeah, yeah. that the sheriff's department or whatever they call yeah, what it. What a sheriff's office, whatever. Yeah. So they arrive there. Um, oh, there's a lot of reporters outside waiting for any um, statements from the from the the sheriff or whoever. And of course, the sheriff is baffled by this. He thinks that Norman's a good Norman guy. was a good person. He thought he would confide to him about what's wrong and all that stuff. But Norman is not willing to share it with him share with him but he was able to share what he could with the psychiatrist yeah and the psychiatrist he conveys this all to the sheriff and to um sam and to Lila and to everyone else that's in well not office. everyone else in the office yeah yeah it, it pretty much boils down he's he the, uh, he reveals that norman killed his mother and her lover Yes. Uh, and Norman went a little bit crazy. He wasn't totally normal at that time, and he killed him anyway. <laughs> and well, he said something yeah. about that he was he wasn't normal since his father's death. Passed away. Yeah. So he was. Um, yeah, it's always a bit troubled. Weird. A troubled boy. Mm. Trouble. Crazy yeah. maniac. Yeah. And of course, That's trouble. <laughs> yeah. And one of the policemen says, "I mean, Sam. I think Sam says, why is he dressed like that?'" And one of the policemen says, "He's a trans. That's." A transvestite, but but he but the psychiatrist says no, he's not a transvestite. 
There's two reasons why that was put in there, but okay. I'll, I'll explain in a minute. He said he's only dress, a transvestite does it for sex, sexual gratification, that sort of stuff. But when Norman was doing it to keep the illusion of his mother being alive, that's not being a transvestite. No, not the same thing. But back in those days, you couldn't do a transvestite in a movie anyway, because yeah. the same guy said he couldn't do the shower scene, would be robable. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, look at um, Ed Wood. I mean, he did... Um, um, oh, poor Ed. Um, he did um, Glenn and Glenda. And, and that, that did not go down. That, that, that destroyed his career pretty much. Yeah, if yeah. he... If he did other movies before that, maybe it would have given him more recognition and made his career yeah. better. But I won't Boring. get to that one. If you want to do a thing on Edward later on one day, but yeah, about Wood, day. Edward in general, not so much his movies, but yeah. yeah. But I mean, I I think he was a a very creative man in his own way, and given the right sort of funding and the right sort of support, he might have done some good things. But yeah. uh, alas, it was not to be. Yes, yeah, such a shame. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, oh, so anyway, um, after the um, and then the um, the um, policeman asked him what happened to the um four four thousand dollars. Who got? 000. I mean, forty thousand dollars. Who had that? Oh, the swamp. Yeah, and yeah. the sh- the psychiatrist explained these were crimes of passion, not money. profit. Yeah, well, probably, no, yeah. So the money was never um a mu- isn't an element to the story. Yeah, but here's much. the best part. Then the whole final <gasps> scene, and this is a sort of hallmark Ooh. of Albert Hitchcock's style, it's got Norman Bates sitting in the cell, yeah, thinking to himself, but in his, in his mother's grandma's voice. voice. I mean, his mother's voice. His mother's voice. And, and you hear her say, you know, saying, it's a, it's a shame when a mother has to put her, you know, condemn her son or something or rather or accuse a son of a crime or something. Mm. I wouldn't hurt a fly and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And there's an evil look on Norman Bates's face, like saying, yes, he is a maniac. Mm. Yeah, he's the first time in the whole movie mm-hmm. you see that look. And that was the lasting look which sticks in my mind. Since 1960 or 60, I saw the movie with my dad years ago, to now that look is still in there. It's yeah. a, he did it so well. Anthony yeah. Perkins, and, uh, he did great. Yeah, enough to the, send anyone to chills. Yeah, the, the thing is out of me, I'll tell you right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. yeah, so that's... Good, good ending. Yeah, so we faded out in so, the end. And through, through the credits. So, yeah. so, uh, that, but that's or a, I'm not sure if there was credits that came after it. I mean, okay, uh, the end. Okay. Yes, all sorts. <laughs> and we see the... Um, the the tr- the car Marion's car being pu- pulled out oh yeah it's out. pulled out of, yeah it's out pulled out, out yeah, so, yeah but that's it w- that was not necessarily mm-hmm. required but they hey we found the car that's it but mm-hmm. but they didn't see anything in it or anything so mm. they just enough oh we got the car out but it would have found more cars in there probably mm-hmm. another car an un- an underwater mm-hmm. car yard damn mm-hmm. there. <laughs> yes, anyway so, so instantly um I go back to Hitchcock's movie, I mean, not Hitchcock's movie, I mean, um, the biography drama of Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that there was a few scenes, to narrow it down, uh, most of it being dramatised, most of it's reality, I've said. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, uh, the interesting thing about Hitch in this one is that he did ask everyone to keep the, this plot yeah, not, a secret. Don't tell anybody. He even so, asked his secretary to buy up thousands and thousands of copies well, of the book that means they to could avoid buy, yeah. um, anyone bothering to sneak off and read the book and not watch the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and there might, might have been thousands and thousands of books. It, was, it, it would have been a limited run because yeah. I don't think anyone knew too much of Robert Block's books called Psycho anyway. Yeah. They might have made a couple hundred books out there, so they just scoured all the local bookstores and whatever, mm. and they bought them up so no one could actually see what the storyline was going to be. What a great move. Mm-hmm. Yes, so How about all the people had books before? Oh, yes. <laughs> Good <laughs> point there, Mike. Where they get their book from? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. The old? Yes. Uh-huh. So he um, avoid any... He also avoid... Um, any of his cast and crew to have any interviews with the um, media, media mm, and yeah. stuff like that. They even had to swear an oath, which is tr- which was in the movie, but I wanted to check for myself to see if it was a true oath he swore them to, you know, in the movie. I just want to make sure so that I'm not being or, wrong. Yeah, they're, yeah they're sometimes the they, they, they o- overdo the movies and put stuff in it that doesn't mm-hmm. really exist. But, yeah, no, they did, did, did a vow of... Uh, uh, an oath to uh, not tell anybody what's going on, anything that on the set. So mm. they kept it a, a bottled up secret. Now, mm. let's roll on to the other bits about 
the uh, Universal Studios and Paramount and everywhere. They didn't want to release it onto as a uh, through the whole chain. Hmm. I believe they wanted to release it selected cinemas. Mm-hmm. And they had a few rules and regulations put in. Out of Hitchcock, I believe, did all the marketing. Did he? Yes, Sarah? he yeah. did. He yeah, did yeah. all the marketing. Yeah. So he he did his bit and mm. said, right. Uh, he controlled all. He built up the uh, hype, the suspense. He had people queuing up down the street to get yeah. into the theaters. Yeah, and just so you know, he um went, he asked the the stu- the um cinemas to not let in people who came in late or oops, I left my my checkbook out. At, at home, so Checkbook? I can, well left it, um, uh, my wallet so at home. There's no one, no one's allowed to come in after the movie started. And there's a reason or for this. Or halfway through the movie or started. Yeah, because yeah, the, the leading lady's not going to be there anymore. She's going to be already dead. Yeah, and, and you're you know, looking if, at if you if you, if you miss part of the movie, the movie won't make that much sense to you. You wanted mm. people to see it from the opening credits to yeah. the closing. So if mm. for those who have probably missed half of it out there, and I know there are a few out there who probably have never seen it in the well, actual some cinema, young guys probably who, seen it, yeah. who've been probably silly and decided to come in a bit late, well, that's your own problem. Sorry, guys. You should have been more careful with your time. <laughs> yeah. You go into the theatre, it starts at whatever time, that's the time to be there. Yes. Otherwise, don't go. go. Yeah, quite right. Anyway, now, but now you can get on DVD and whatever and uh, mm-hmm. stream it. No, whatever. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> don't torrent it. No. I yes. mean, uh, also, I found out some interesting other things about the um, that hit that uh, the Hitchcock um, um, some movie did. Um, it says that. I learned that Anthony Hopkins, the guy who did play Hitchcock in the movie, oh, was that, was he um it was, actually it was, it was it? Anthony Hopkins. Oh, okay, was it? Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Met actual Sir Arthur Hitchcock when he was a young actor. So yeah. he was pretty much. So they kind of um met at a restaurant with his agent and everything. That was yeah. kind of cool for him. Yeah, so there was another Hitchcock movie with a different guy in it. They all sing the other guy. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, but um, he played a very good role. He carried mm-hmm. over the image of Hitchcock mm-hmm. uh, as much as he could, mm. considering Hitchcock was a one-off. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so another thing mm-hmm. interesting about this is that Hitchcock paid $9,000 for the film rights to Robert Bloch's novel based on, on the positive review he read in the New York Times. Oh, yeah. didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Ah. He also made the bidding announce anonymously so as to, to keep the project under wrap for as long as possible. Aha. Uh-huh. So he kept it a bit of a secret. For everybody. Yes. Uh, just like a lot of other things in this m- this psycho movie that was kept a secret, including the plot and the ending, which they were trying to hide from the media. Which really annoys me sometimes that the media they just jump in and try to find out as much as about the movie before it hits the cinemas. I just don't know why they can't wait. They had trolls back in those days too. I just don't understand why they just don't wait until the actual movie is released. Some of us want to enjoy a movie out there instead of being, um, you know, leaving us don't spoil it, spoil us to death, or trash it or anything else. There's a role. It's it's bad enough that this happens a lot, Mm. and it annoys me that so many movies these days have gone to lengths to do that. Exactly. Even anyway. if it means um, the um, idea of promoting will be the great way to do it. I don't know. Hmm. In the name of promoting. Anyway. Anyway. Um, What's next? Let me see. <laughs> um, as for something else I found out, that po- contrary to popular demand in the Hitchcock movie, um, Elma Hitchcock, who's um, hi- wife to Hitchcock, never got involved in filming the certain scenes in the movie. Just so you know. Actually, I read something in the computer as well you know, on the internet. That some other people said, uh, especially the shower scene. Yeah. And another person saying, "Oh, well, I directed that." Hmm. And I think he's a guy who worked the North by Northwest. Hmm. Um, and everyone, all the people, even down at Lee, are saying, "No, Hitchcock was there the whole time directing it." Hmm. Um, so a lot of people saying, "I was there. I did it." They didn't. Hitch- Hitchcock, apart from a couple of a couple of days when Hitchcock wasn't feeling well, his assistant director stepped in, I believe. 
mm. um, and helped out there. And I think what he did didn't like anyway. So he had to redo the scenes. Oh boy. So well, that's that's all I got. The yeah, he didn't get it. He, I think it was the part where Obergas was coming out the stairs in the house, and he he, he kept the Obergas in the wrong light. He kept seeing as a sinister person. Mm. Um, Hitchcock wanted him to be like a lamb being led to the slaughter, oh, an innocent. I see. Hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, because he's just an inquiry agent. I'm a, I'm a simple guy. I'm yeah, going to go see like, this little old lady. Yeah, he's like yeah. a real estate ma- agent. Well, he's yeah, just, just an ordinary nice guy. <laughs> nice guy. Um, he's just got a stupid job. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. Yes, um, and so another this... interesting thing I found out is despite Hitchcock's early intentions to use, he was going to use jazz music to influence the theme. Well, but that would have been popular back in those days. Yeah, and mm. he, Baron, what's his name? Uh, crying. I can't read your handwriting. B. I can't read your Bernard. Is Bernard it? Herman. Bernard Herman. Bernard Herman. Herman? Bernard Herman. Herman. Um, he kind of immortalized the um psycho score oh, containing that only that? stringed <laughs> instruments. Yeah, he did. Like, he did that sort of suspensing if the when the yeah. shower scenes or whatever. Yeah, yeah the, and the stuff. Yeah, another really thing good. I should mention mm. to you guys that. This I found out just today when I was review looking up fun facts. I found that the music, the psycho music, was used later in, in I think I said Stephen King's movie, and then used well, it's again. It's, it's not really music. Music. It's more of a sound effect. When you think about yeah. it, isn't really. Yeah. It has been used. I think it had The Simpsons. It had other places. Yeah, it well, just pops up all the time. It, it just seems that that Stephen. King used it for in his in I the, his movie. I think it was movie. actually in High Anxiety, a Mel Brooks movie, yeah, other things like that. Well, yeah. Yeah, but remember the shower scene there? He came with his newspaper. Well, he used a bloody newspaper. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a spin-off of I Psycho. Know, but I know. No, it wasn't. It was it was a spin-off of lots of movies. And that was a bit. And, and did not that. to mention it was yeah, a, it was yeah. based off Hitchcock's movies. I did. I know, thousand. but they did lots. They just said yes, that. but. Kerry is not psycho, I didn't say and I, I was just telling you, yeah. Mike, that that yeah, Kerry okay. is a different movie to Psycho. It's it's yeah, about they, supernatural powers, and, they, still use that and noise. they used it in the movie, That's okay. and then they later on used it again, or remixed it up for a Reanimator in 1985, which had a different, you, you know, they used a bit of a different spin on the music, even to make it to give it the uh, right atmost, according to. Robert Band. He says, he, while some people thought he, his direction with the music was a bit, well, whatever. They thought that they he just wanted to create an atmos in his move in the movie. Hmm. Sounds good to me. Yes. So what the other movies like Mel Brooks that it's not the same thing, Mike, because that's just spin-offs taking the music. Oh, yes, it doesn't have to use the sound same 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 soundtrack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought, well, you know, you know I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's it just again. that they're just taking it and now. just using it to boo, make boo, it boo. look more sinister and adding more of the, the suspense, just like Roth, that he did. I must admit that I understand that they, when they wrote, they got the book, they changed a few things and left a few things out and mm. uh, they remodeled it. So the uh, screenwriter... Um, Mm-hmm. Stefano and mm-hmm. Hitchcock got together and they remoulded some of the characters and some of the bits. They yeah, they took a few. I mean, Norman Bates was supposed to be an older guy for drinking problem. They made him a younger guy who was clean cut, like fresh Kate, you know, yeah. a fresh faced kid sort of thing. They changed a few things around. Yeah, one thing I noticed that mm. the actual Norman Bates, he was supposed to be an overweight in his 40s um, person, too. What you said that? No, you said drunk person. Oh, I said a middle-aged guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, That's anyway. what I just said. Okay, okay. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Sorry, Mike. Are you listening to me as well? Nope. Aha, uh-huh, mm-hmm. you're not. Aha. Uh-huh. Nope. Shut up before I hit you. <laughs> There's a few little things. It was quite interesting. They they remodeled things, but mm-hmm. the, the, the best part was obviously um, the casting. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who else tried out for the parts, but... Um, yeah. I think they had got a winner of Norman Bates being played by mm-hmm. Anthony Perkins and Marion Crane was mm-hmm. adequately filled by um, yeah. Janet Lee. I think it's, I yeah. mean, I couldn't have chosen better I mean, if I was mm-hmm. going to make a movie. They really did. I mean, 
I don't know how much experience Janet Lee had before then. Well, um, Janet Lee has been done doing a lot of classy and uh, before and, then. Yeah, she yeah, even yeah. played in uh, what's that movie that kind of inspired her to do Psycho? Let me see. Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, a Touch of Evil. Yeah, that's it. Touch of oh, Evil. Right. Yeah, she yeah, did yeah, that yeah, movie, yeah, and yeah. that kind of inspired that, her. Was that the one with uh, Charlton Heston? Um, I don't know. I never seen the movie, and I'm, oh, yeah. I just only heard it from. That probably yeah. was the uh, influence that pushed her to go for the Psycho movie. Yeah, because that, that was a rather deep movie. Too, yeah, it was one. deep, and she also did a lot of movies where she's portrayed as the good girl from the, from the um, good side of the town a lot. So, so well, technically, she looks so this she was could be kind a school of school mom, or it could, she could be a stripper. Since he looks both, mm-hmm. uh, she's got a nice bod. Yeah, and of course, as I said before. Um, Janet Lee's um, daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, she went on to do Halloween and a lot of other r- r- um, horror-related movies like Prom Night 2. Not Prom Night 2, just Prom Night as well. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, so, so not to confuse you. She gets you. around. Mm-hmm. Another screen queen. Yeah, well, didn't we discuss earlier that, that Psycho was um, the first ever horror slashes? Well, it, yeah, it, if, if you're looking at slashes genre, mm-hmm. uh, this would have technically been the first... Slasher movie mm-hmm. for those who like slasher movies mm. because that's what he was. He killed people with a carving knife. Mm. He, um, um, and yeah. he was um, mm. schizophrenic and all, yeah. all the other good groovy things yeah. you want to view. And if you guys want person. to look at the yeah. book, guys, if you ever look at the book, um, actually, um, Marion Crane's actually got her head chopped up, lopped off. Oh, in the book, yeah. In the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. In the book, that would have been a bit too gory. Uh, yeah. So they changed that bit, obviously. So that wouldn't have got past the, uh, the senses. No, you're not going to have someone's head cut off. In. Yeah. So, okay, how about stabbing? As long as you don't see the knife piercing the skin. <laughs> what else? You know, you want, you want to have an evening dress on in the shower recess? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I don't know. Yeah. These, these senses, they, they, they take all the fun away. Yeah, well, they've... Um, that's probably the reason why, um, if you look at um, Halloween, Friday the 13th, they, they always dumb down the um, gore in those movies, I mean, in, the pre, in the past movies, not the newest ones, I mean. Hmm. In, those, in the old movies, they, they kind of make it out. They, they do a lot of kill off screens a lot of the time. Like you cut to another scene, screen, yep. another shot, and you hear a, a slight wailing in the background hinting that the person is being killed while, <gasps> while you're not looking. No, but everything was pretty graphic for its time. And then you graphic. see that person much later hacked to beats. Now, I, was, I did say it before about the shower scene, but Janet Lee has actually stated that she did all the shower scenes herself. Mm. She didn't use a body double in there. Mm. Now, some people say there was a body double used for some bits of it. She's saying that she... Did, did not have a, and if you look at it, it looks like it. Mm-hmm. Now, the, however, the, Sarah brought something to me before that in the trailer, Vera Miles played the girl in the shower. Mm. Oh, I have, I haven't seen the trailer. Well, no, I didn't say that. I just what said, you said? I said that. Um, I thought you said they put a blonde wig on her and put made her the girl in the shower. No, I didn't. I'm sure you did. Vera Miles was in the shower. I said the that. I said. That Vera Miles, um, you know, wore. She was told by Hitchcock to wear a wig f- throughout her scene, throughout her scenes in the movie. She was. I mean, she's not a natural. She's not a blonde. It's just so you guys know. She's actually an, a different. Cu- you know, so she, so Hitchcock asked her to wear a wig throughout the movies, That's and we've good. probably seen it in Hitchcock. In the in the move in the in the biodrama that she was actually brunette. I know that, dear. And that's I why the reason that. why they had to have her wear a wig throughout her the throughout Psycho scene movies, and she didn't do the um the um the um shower scene. Oh, here is here's what I'm looking for in my notes. In that shower scene, forty five seconds, they had seventy eight pieces of film cut to make a forty five minute scene. scene. That's a lot of work. I mean, mm-hmm. We saw the biodrama where I spent a lot of time in the cutting room trying to make it work and the end result was pretty damn good. Um, 
brilliant to take this take different all these different perspectives uh, everything a whole lot whack 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 and yeah it worked yeah so I'm really pleased so very miles did wear had to wear a wig throughout her throughout working with Hitchcock pretend to be a blonde so she she can fit so it works in with um the fact that that Janet Lee wore you know was blonde yeah there was also right? thoughts they were going to bring in Grace Kelly for the role, but she's already she was married to a um, to a prince, so she couldn't do the role, even if she wanted to. Sadly enough, <laughs> what? She, that's true. She she couldn't do the role. Right? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah, well, Grace Grace Kelly um, was she married, wasn't she? Yeah, she was married time. to a prince. Prince Rainey at the time, so she wouldn't have done any movies at all. Yeah, she's also especially when you're gonna be naked and kill, being killed in the shower. I, don't, yeah. I wouldn't think you'd like that. No, yeah. <laughs> wouldn't think. No, no. Yes. So anyway, is there anything else we want to add to this one? Ah, uh, not particularly. But uh, that bit about the shower scene in the trailer, I might have read it somewhere instead of Sarah. So I apologise, Sarah. Thanks. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure. Dan Lee wasn't available for the shower scene trailer. Hmm. So they did Vera Miles. And, and it, would, it would have been blurry and stuff. I have to look at it. Hmm. The ha- it, w- it wasn't in the trailer. I've got to find the I've trailer. I've looked at the trailer it's, and it's not uh, sure? Vera Miles. Who is, you think it's her? Mm, it's definitely um, um, definitely um, okay. Janet Lee. Well, I read it somewhere possibly. And uh, maybe I am mistaken or the person who wrote it and put it on the internet is mistaken. Most likely. So there, I, I stand corrected, folks. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. I just like to think so sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how would you like to rate this movie, Mike? Oh, no, that's going to be different. That's going to be... This is one of my favourite oldie-type movies. So mm. Um, mm. now I'm going to rate a few things before I give the grade. This was done on a low budget at that time. Mm-hmm. Hitchcock was inspired by the low budget films of that time, how these some of these movie producers, directors were making low budget films of a reasonably good quality. Mm-hmm. So he decided, hey, I'm going to have a shot at doing the same thing, even so far as going into doing it in black and white and not colour <laughs> to keep the budget down. Um, and what he did, he made a damn fine movie. Mm-hmm. Nobody believed in it. No one believed in him at all. The studio guys didn't didn't back him. He had to do it. Sure, he made that the studio. He had made cut a deal, but he took it on his own shoulders to make the movie. Yeah, he, an independent. Yeah, I wonder. And, uh, um, he did great. I wonder, if Mike, seeing as it's not owned by Paramount Theatres or anything, uh, does it does that mean it's directly um, linked to his family um, like legacy? He, no, I think I, I think I'm not sure. I have to check. I think he sold the rights to it sometime later on. Oh, I, I think. see. And so it became the property of Universal Studios or Paramount or somewhere, and now probably Universal Studios actually own the rights now. Oh, okay. um, but they remember the part of he, he, he did he trade his rights for the hundred fifty thousand shares hmm. in MCA was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, so he had controlling interest in the studio, <laughs> so he could be his own boss, <laughs> and that's a. <laughs> <laughs> he did that was a good thing. That's oh, a good thing. I can do my own thing now. It's like a kid being in charge of a lolly shop. <laughs> but Psycho, for what it was, a low budget movie done by a guy, a direct producer director of this uh, caliber. Um, I don't think he's done anything as good before or since. And I think the um, the uh, the critics and everybody else in the industry say the same thing. Well, I've seen North by Northwest. It's a great movie. I've seen other movies. They're great. Well, but there is something th- about this. I do think that the Birds one, it was the birds good. It's pretty not, interesting. Yeah. And it goes a little bit into <coughs> the realms of fantasy when I think a about it. A little bit, movie. maybe. But this one here is a... Probably because he changed his genres. Yeah. This is a... A psychological thriller come horror. And he hadn't done one of these before. That's why it probably stands alone. And that the psychological horror aspect, the horror, ooh, the psychological horror aspect of it is what actually stands out in my mind. So I'm going to give it, drum roll please, and brrr, 10. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to label this um, 10 out of 10 too. So that's, um, um, that makes us, um, a we Are you unanimous? Unanimous, and <laughs> let's give it a hand for this movie. 
Yay, Alfred. Actually, yes. just before we go, I mean, they did, 20 years later, they did the second movie. Yeah. Now, Alfred Hitchcock, I don't, well, he would have been dead by then. Or he, he could have been um, supervising? No, he, oh, wait, I think no, he's he dead, 20 yeah. years later. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, they did the it. second movie, which, which was written to be when Norma Bates would have been released from the insane asylum. Wasn't there two, um, um, uh, I think there was, yeah, I think there was two, um, um, bit of, um, sequels out there, uh, the, um, Bates Motel TV series that I'm came out. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried, I'm talking about the movies. I know, I know, I'm just telling, I'm just saying to the audience that they made, back then, not now, I meant, yeah, like, they made a TV series not called, called Bates, Motel. Bates Motel, not, I think, directly relinked to the one that just, that's not recently been created in now. I meant a, it was done years ago where um, Norman Bates passed the motel and all its possessions it to to a to a previous to, um, put somebody new in, in the previous in the, person in you met in the asylum. I know, but what was I going to say in the real movies? But okay. back to the real movies. Now, so they made the second movie about twenty years later, which would be in line of when Norman got out, and they continued the storyline, but the more so is the director hmm. very much, I think he copied Alfred Hitch- Hitchcock's style as hmm. closely as you could. Hmm. Um, and I think he did really, really good. I think he did too. In the subsequent Again, movies, I w- yeah. we're not going to review that one just yet. We'll no. do it next time, no. in the next day or two. Yeah, but those, was it four movies? Three. Um, four. Four. Yeah, the, those four movies, they kept the feeling that Alfred Hitchcock. Oh wait, three. Sorry, three? I'm sorry. So I, uh, apart from Hitch, he did. Th- he there were three other movies after that. He had this one, Psycho. He had the one where uh, he comes out, and he goes back to Nut House. No, no, he, he gets a new mother. Yes. And then he has a third movie where he goes back into Nut House. No, the third one was when he's um released and he finds out that he's 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 re- he's married to someone. The, the, oh, okay. So that was the third one. Yeah. See, so okay, the sorry. first, the second one is he gets released. The next, the next one, he he gets caught again and goes back to you know where, and he's re-released in this in the fourth third, the fourth one where he's now living with a new wife and he they're planning on. That's well, I'll I'll get I'll get into that. No, that's eventually. what I said. There's four movies, not yes. three. Okay, but anyway, irrespective during the, that franchise of movies, they've kept the same feel. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it so it's kind of good. I mean, I just hate it when, when directors decide to go a different direction. Even though they try to copy the theme to an extent, but then they drop off to do, do a different story. Now, there wasn't a a shot-for-shot shot movie made as a remake of Psycho. Hmm. Um, Vince Vaughn, I think, played the main role. I haven't got notes in front of me. Hmm. I think Anne Heck was in it and somebody else. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry... Um, they copied it. I don't think they did a very good job of it. Hmm. Um, it's yeah. If it, if it, if it's good, don't try to remake it. Yeah. You know, it's you, you, you can't improve on perfection. Yeah. If yeah, yeah. we'll we'll, yeah. S- we'll see about trying to do a um a look at the um remake. You know, for you guys, just so to make comparisons yeah where, where it was lacking where it's lacking mm. and what's wrong with it and uh, we'll, no, we'll try not, not to rip not, it apart too gonna, much we won't rip it apart like a troll would but we'll yeah, we'll, we'll critique it and see what how we it could. yeah well, and the way we feel it is mm. anyway irrespective, irrespective. I gave it 10 you're given the 10 and these people won't want to go go to bed now okay? all right <laughs> um <laughs> thanks for listening to our latest podcast this guys. was a long one sorry about that but there's a lot to talk about yes sorry about that guys and we had a lot of argument there. <laughs> <laughs> we sometimes we sometimes have a bit of a battle here about things, but I'm sure she said it. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong too, guys. <laughs> so anyway, um, thanks for listening to our latest podcast episode, and I'll see you guys next. We'll see. We'll listen. To, well, we hope you guys can um, check us out next time yeah. on our podcast. So um, thanks for listening, boys and ghouls. So and others. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll. Hope to hear from you very soon. So see you. Yeah. So see you around, guys. Bye.